Let's continue our discussion of the periodic table by looking at some special classes of groups of elements. First of all, let's consider the diatomic elements. H2, N2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. These are your seven diatomic elements. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine are all gases, while bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid. The transition elements are found in groups 3 through 12 on the periodic table. The transition elements are important because they have multiple oxidation numbers. If you look on your periodic table, you see that most of them have more than one oxidation number. The transition metals have electrons filling D sublevels. The two outermost sublevels can be involved in chemical bond formation. Let's consider the element copper. Look at the diagram below of copper. Copper has an electron configuration of 2, 8, 18, and 1. It has two electrons in the first energy level, 8 in the second, 18 in the third, and 1 in the fourth. Copper has one valence electron. In the upper right hand corner, you see that copper has two oxidation numbers, plus one and plus two. In the compound CuCl, copper has an oxidation number of positive one, meaning it has lost its one valence electron from the fourth energy level. It has lost an electron from a 4s sublevel. In a different compound, CuCl2, copper has an oxidation number of positive 2, which means it has lost two electrons. It has lost one electron from the fourth energy level, 4s, and another electron from the third energy level, the 3D sublevel. Transition elements can lose electrons from two different energy levels. Transition elements are interesting because they form colored compounds. For example, we know that if we see a blue solution in the lab, it most likely contains copper. Green solutions tend to have nickel in them. Chromium compounds can be either orange or yellow. Let's look at the lanthanides and the actinides. The lanthanides and actinides are those elements separated from the main periodic table. You see them below. Lanthanides fill 4F sublevels after 6S, and actinides fill 5F sublevels after 7S. Another name for these elements is the inner transition elements. The 4F sublevel is filled right after the 6S. That means 4F belongs in period 6. In other words, lanthium should be located in the 6th period. 5F is filled right after 7s, which means that actinium should be located in the 7th period. This is a picture of the standard periodic table of elements with the lanthanides and actinides separated from the main table. Let's look at what the periodic table would look like if the lanthanides and actinides were located in the main table. The group 1 metals are called the alkali metals. They are the most reactive metals. They readily lose one valence electron. 
They are so reactive that they are only found as compounds in nature. In other words, you cannot just find a hunk of sodium lying on the street. Instead, sodium is most often found as sodium chloride, or salt. The reason why hydrogen is in the same family as the alkali metals is not because it's a metal, but because it has one valence electron. The alkali metals are filling S sublevels. That was a piece of sodium dropped in water. Sodium is so reactive it will readily lose its one valence electron to water to form hydrogen gas. The alkaline earth metals are also reactive, but not as reactive as the alkali metals. The alkaline earth metals have two valence electrons. Their outermost electrons are also filling S sublevels. Notice that beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium are all silvery, shiny metals. Look at the reaction of the alkali metals in water. Notice magnesium does not react with water, but calcium, strontium, and barium do. As you go down a family of metals, reactivity increases. The tendency to lose electrons increases. Group 17 are the halogens. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. They are all diatomic. Remember, fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is a liquid, and iodine is a solid. The halogens have a strong, unpleasant odor and will burn flesh. They do not dissolve well in water. The halogens are strongly electronegative, which means that they tend to attract electrons. That means your halogens are strong nonmetals. Nonmetals want to gain electrons. Fluorine is the most reactive nonmetal. It has the largest electronegativity. The halogens react with most metals and many nonmetals. The name halogen comes from the prefix halo, which means salt, and gen, meaning beginnings, salt beginnings. The halogens are your salt formers. The halogens are so reactive that we find them as compounds. The halogens have electrons filling P sublevels. Here are the four halogen elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Fluorine on the left is almost colorless. Next comes chlorine, which is greenish yellow. Fluorine and chlorine are both gases at room temperature, but bromine is a liquid, and iodine is a solid. Even so, they're both quite volatile. You can see the colored vapors, orange-red above the liquid bromine and purple above the solid iodine. Whether solid, liquid or gas, the halogen elements consist of diatomic molecules F2, Cl2, Br2 and I2. Group 18, the noble gases. The noble gases are odorless, colorless, monoatomic gases with low reactivity. Monoatomic means one atom gas. They are not diatomic. There is no such thing as HE2 or NE2. They are monoatomic gases. They all have eight valence electrons except for helium, which has two valence electrons. The outermost electrons of the noble gases are filling P sublevels. Notice the different colors produced by the
the noble gases. This last periodic table shows where S, P, D, and F sublevels are being filled. Groups 1 and 2 are filling S sublevels. Your alkali metals and alkaline earth are filling S sublevels. Your P elements are groups 13 through 18. Your transition elements 3 through 12 are in the D block. And then finally, your lanthanides and actinides are filling F sublevels.